Today, we're going to recap the movie Brimstone, released in 2016. In the first chapter, Revelation, a woman named Liz lives a normal life in the countryside. Liz is mute, so she communicates with her daughter, Sam, through sign language, and Sam helps her interpret. One day, Liz sees her husband, Eli, teaching her stepson, Matthew, how to shoot with a rifle. She goes to Eli and says she's not okay with Matthew handling a gun, but Matthew protests that she's not his mother. At church, a new reverend speaks to the people of the town about false prophets, and Liz seems to recognize him. Afterwards, Eli introduces his family to the reverend, but Liz is already waiting for them at their carriage. Eli tells Liz that the reverend is new in town, and that he deserves more compassion. As they are about to leave, Liz notices a woman named Abigail in labor. Abigail is taken into church and Liz goes there to help deliver the baby. After inspecting the woman, Liz realizes the baby's head is too big, and only one of them can survive. She makes a tough call and saves the mom. Later at their home, Eli talks to Liz about what happened in the church and tells her it's not her fault. Liz says it's all the reverend's fault, but he says the reverend is a man of God. Later on, Liz asks for Matthew's help before she heads somewhere, but he says he's busy. He doesn't seem to like her very much. Soon after, Liz and Sam go to Abigail's house, but her husband, Nathan, says there's no need for their visit, since the reverend has arranged a doctor for them. Later that night, after getting very drunk, Nathan attacks their home with a shotgun. He holds Liz responsible for his child's death after seeing his skull. Eli tries to comfort Nathan, yelling from his room, but he doesn't listen. Shortly after, the reverend appears and sends Nathan on his way. Liz desperately tries to stop Eli from letting the reverend in, but he ignores her completely. After getting inside, the reverend tells Eli that Liz had played God and decided who was to live and who was to pass. Liz secretly listens to their conversation, and when the reverend asks for her presence, her husband goes upstairs to get her. The reverend tells her he knows she's hiding there, listening, and he adds that he has come to punish her for her sins. When he goes away, Liz tells her husband that they have to leave town, and Eli promises her they will go to his father's house in a few days. The next day, Matthew finds that all of his father's sheep have been killed. Matthew and Eli go to confront Nathan. In the meantime, as Liz is cleaning the mess and Sam is waiting outside blindfolded, the reverend appears and locks Liz in the barn. He takes Sam away to have a conversation with her. Liz tries to escape from the barn but falls and hits her head, passing out. At Nathan's home, Eli realizes that the couple moved out of town after losing their baby. That night, Liz tucks Sam in bed and asks about her encounter with the reverend. Given what the reverend had said, Sam asks her mom if Liz is evil. As Eli sleeps profoundly, Liz exits the house and goes to find the reverend in the middle of the night. She takes a knife with her but only finds her own daughter's doll in the reverend's bed. Meanwhile, the reverend stands by Sam's bed with a knife. Eli wakes up from a nightmare and sees his wife is not there. He gets up and spots a light in the barn and goes there to check it. The reverend stabs him and tells Eli he is doing it because Liz loves him. As Liz returns home, she finds Eli bleeding in the barn, with his guts wrapped around his neck. Matthew steps in and Eli tells him to take the entire family to his father's cabin. Matthew then takes his life out of mercy. They soon realize the reverend has also set their house on fire. With no other choice, the family escapes to Eli's father's house. Chapter 2 named Exodus, begins with a girl named Joanna, who collapses in the desert out of thirst. She is rescued by a Chinese family, who take her into their carriage. As they get to a nearby town called Bismuth, the Chinese man sells Joanna to a brothel owned by a man named Frank. At the brothel, a woman named Sally takes care of her. She soon explains to Joanna their kind of work and what they must do. Later on, while Joanna serves tables, a man takes interest in her. Sally steps in and convinces the man to take her instead, but he insists that Joanna watches everything. After they finish, the man tries to force Joanna to do some stuff, so Sally shoots him. The next day, Sally is hanged for the murder she committed. Days later, Frank tells Joanna that the time has come for her to become a woman, and he makes love to her. In the next scene, we see Joanna is now a grown woman, working as one of the ladies in the brothel. Joanna is good friends with one of the pleasure workers, named Elizabeth Brundy, and the woman tells her that she would like to leave town. The next night, Elizabeth warns a man multiple times not to kiss her, but he does so anyway. She then bites his tongue and causes a big fuss in the brothel. As punishment, she gets her tongue cut off by Frank. 
Elizabeth is now mute because of her tongue and communicates with Joanna through sign language. The next day, Elizabeth and Joanna go to a matchmaker, who tells Elizabeth that he has found a man willing to marry her. His name is Eli and he already has a son. On the night that Elizabeth intends to depart, a customer pays to have all the women in the brothel for one night. The customer turns out to be the reverend, and despite having paid for all of them, he only chooses to be with Joanna, who tries to hide her face. When they are alone, the reverend tells Joanna he is not worthy of salvation, but he has come to save her. After Joanna says she won't be with him, he starts beating her. Joanna screams for help and Elizabeth walks in the room. After she cuts the reverend's face with a knife, he stabs her with it, ending her life. As he's about to continue with Joanna, she takes the knife and cuts his throat. She promptly dresses up Elizabeth as herself and sets the body on fire. Shortly after, she goes to the town's doctor's house, and pays him to cut her tongue off. After he refuses to do it, she does it herself. That's how Joanna becomes Liz, and soon rides on a carriage to meet Eli and his kid, Matthew. The third chapter of the movie, called Genesis, starts with the Reverend watching his daughter, Joanna, praying in Dutch. He blames it on Anna, his wife, for his daughter's language. The next day, they're at church and the Reverend calls out for his wife. He rebukes her in front of everybody for not having received a visitation from the Lord, and adds that he is ashamed of her. Later that night, the Reverend beats up his wife and Joanna sees it all. Anna then goes to her daughter's bed and cries. The next day, Joanna tries to clean the blood on her underwear and believes she is dying. Her mom explains to her what is going on with her body. While Anna helps Joanna clean up, she complains about how her father never helps out, and Anna explains that doing chores is the fate of women. The next day, two men named Sam and Wolf arrive at the family's house, badly hurt. Joanna proceeds to hide them in the barn so they may get better. The Reverend seems to develop an odd attraction to his own daughter, which makes his wife very worried. In the barn, the Reverend explains to Joanna that her mother doesn't fulfill her natural duties to him. Soon after, he makes Joanna clean him up in a bath. Anna sees them and says the act is not right, but he doesn't listen. Later that night, Anna tries to make love to her husband, but he refuses, saying the Lord has other plans. The next day, while Joanna dresses up, the Reverend watches her. Anna sees him and apologizes for not being a good wife, but he doesn't seem to care. She then tells him he is committing a terrible sin and he defends himself. When she calls him a filthy pig, in Dutch, he beats her up with his belt. Soon after, the Reverend and Anna leave the house and go to a blacksmith's shop. There, the Reverend has an instrument made to cover up Anna's mouth and humiliate her. In the meantime, Samuel takes Wolf's life while he is taking a dump and explains to Joanna that he had to do it, or else Wolf would have done it to him. The next day at the church, Joanna tells her mother that she would never allow someone to treat her like her father does to her. Anna moves away and hangs herself in front of the whole church. The Reverend tells the congregation that he had tried to help his wife, but had failed. Later that night, Joanna feels all alone and goes to Samuel to get some comfort. She tries to make out with him, but he recognizes her grief, and just hugs her. Soon after, the Reverend takes Joanna and tries to force her to marry him in the name of the Lord. Samuel interrupts them and tries to free her, but the Reverend takes his gun and shoots him with it. He then drags Joanna back to their home and whips her for befriending Samuel. Later, he finally forces his way with her. When he falls asleep, Joanna runs away from the monster. The fourth and last chapter, called Retribution, begins where the first one ended. Joanna, Sam and Matthew are on their carriage on their way to the kid's grandfather's house. When their carriage hits something, Matthew steps off to take a look. It was all a trap set up by the Reverend, who shoots Matthew and takes him out. Unable to do much, Joanna continues with Sam to Eli's father's house. That night, Eli's father cries upon hearing the bad news about his son and grandson. Shortly after, Joanna loads a shotgun and her father-in-law asks her if she's sure she wants to do this and she says it's her fight. Joanna then asks him to stay with Sam. While on lookout, Joanna spots her father and shoots at him, but misses. The Reverend tells her he will take advantage of Sam, and that he will make her watch while he turns her into a woman. When he mentions that leaving Sam alone in the cabin was a mistake, she rushes inside to find Eli's father gone. She immediately tries to take Sam out through the window, but the Reverend catches them. Soon after, the Reverend ties up Joanna. He beats Sam up with a whip and makes his daughter watch it. He claims to be a man beyond salvation and therefore he can do whatever he wants. As he's about to take advantage of Sam, Joanna summons an enormous amount of strength, 
breaks her own arms and successfully frees herself. She runs into the room and throws a lamp on the reverend, setting him ablaze. She shoots him out of the window, finally putting an end to his miserable life. Time passes and Joanna seems to have started a sawmill at Eli's late father's house. One day, she spots Nathan, who tells her he became a sheriff in Bismuth. He also informs her that he found a wanted poster of Elizabeth Brundy, accused of ending Frank's life. Joanna then realizes that Elizabeth eliminated Frank just before she came into her room, where she tried to free her from the reverend. Unfortunately, Nathan arrests Joanna for a crime she didn't commit. On the boat, as Nathan takes Joanna away, she takes a last look at her daughter and throws herself into the river with a smile. She knows her daughter will be fine now that the reverend is gone. Years later, Sam, now an adult woman, runs the sawmill and has a daughter of her own. She narrates the story of her mom and says she can feel her presence watching over her. Thanks for watching. If you like our content, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe.